In this video, we will talk about bending. In the figure, you see a beam, beam and bending moments are applied. As we can see, on the upper surface, compression, on the lower surface, tension, strains, and stresses are developing. Somewhere between these two areas, there is a axis or a plane which is neutral. That means where the stress and strain are zero. In summary, compression and shortening in the upper half, tensile and elongation in the lower half, and zero stresses on the neutral plane. So this is the distribution of the stresses in such a section. Neutral axis is zero stresses. On the upper half, compression negative stresses. In the lower tension, positive stresses. When you know the maximum stress on the surface and since you know that the stress is zero on the neutral plane and if the material behaves linear elastic so you can calculate the stress for a given point having a distance y from the neutral axis with this relation so stress and strain on the neutral axis is zero and it increases linear with increasing distance y and it becomes maximum for the maximum distance. So what about the value of this stress? So when you are interested in the stress in point A, what you have to do is first put the bending moment in the section, put the distance from the neutral axis, this is the distance from the neutral axis for point A, and this is the moment of inertia around the neutral axis of the section. You see, well, the higher M, the higher the distance, you will have higher sigma values, the lower your moment of inertia, which is the resistance of the section against bending, the higher I, the lower your sigma. What about this negative value? We have defined that a moment which is creating negative stresses in the upper surface should is, is defined as positive. So when I have, for example, for point A or for some point in the upper half, there my M is positive, my Y or C, my Y or C, since in the upper part, it, this is positive, this is positive, this is a positive value. In this case, in the upper half, negative stresses should develop and here the positive moment should create negative stresses. This is why I put a negative sign. Okay, the maximum stress is, as, as we already mentioned, on the surface. Here you have a value, a ratio, C and I, I and C. This is the maximum stress definition. C is the maximum distance from the neutral axis. I is the moment of inertia. Both can be determined with the dimensions of the sections. So both are a geometrical, let's say, property of the section. And if you call these S, which can be defined as the section modulus. And instead of this C over A, you put as S here, the same sigma max formula 
you can write modulus divided by the section modulus of the uh, beam, then you have either this formula or this formula depends on what you need and what you want to calculate. Both are valid. A very simple problem. Steel bar. Well, the yield strength is 300 megapascal and a bending moment is applied, but it is not known. So we like to find the bending moment which causes yielding in the material. First, the moment of inertia, 1 over 12 bh cube for rectangles. This is my sigma maximal value. The sign doesn't matter too much because it's in the lower and upper half. We have a symmetric cross section. It's the same. So we know that for ductile metals, the yield strength for both compression and tension can be taken as the same. So we take the I value. Next, this sigma equals to M. The distance from the neutral axis is 60. That is my moment of inertia. And at the point where yielding begins, your M is 43.2 kilonewton meter. Another problem, bending, distributed loads. And the section this time looks like this. First we have to find where the maximum bending moment is. For such a beam, it's obvious that it's in the middle. We'll not, in, we'll not go into detail, but if you draw the bending moment diagram, its value is 125 positive. Then we calculate the moment of inertia for this section. Please use the moment of inertia videos if you are not familiar with such calculations. Next, let us calculate the stresses for points A and B. My point A is in the lower half. Its Y value is minus 125, this value. Okay from the neutral axis. And M is positive, Y is negative. That's what I have calculated. And in point A, I have a positive 76 to 9. For point B, this time the distance is positive 105. Put the values, the result is minus 60. Well, another problem, this time a fixed support, as you see over here, maximum allowable distributed load, W is asked. You see W is applied to the, uh, to the right half of the beam. Well, this time the beam has only one axis of symmetry. The centroid is not in the middle, somewhere in the upper half. First, let us calculate the centroid. Well, if you do this calculation, taking area one and area two, and if you do this calculation, taking this axis as a reference, then its, its position is 1.55 meter above this axis. And now this is my neutral axis. So I have determined this I value for this axis. So actually I have two rectangles, two rectangles, but I have to shift these rectangles to the new neutral axis. And if you do the calculation, you find the I value. So 
For such a fixed supported beam, the maximum moment is usually at the fixed support. So you can draw the moment diagram, but it is not necessary. Let us calculate the fixed supports bending moment. Well, here you have W 5 meter. So instead of distributed, this distributed force, you can put 5 W and the moment arm is 7.5. So my, and it's bending like this. That means positive stresses in the upper half. So it has a negative sign. So it is a negative bending moment. This is the force. Sorry, this is the moment arm. This is the force. And the force is minus 70, uh, 37.5. What about the point where the bending moment is maximum? You see where the stress is maximum? If this is your neutral axis, you have to look for the point where the distance is maximum, this is this point. And its distance from the neutral axis is 155 and it's, neg it's negative. Let's put the values and take the absolute value. Okay, for ductile metals where yielding occurs, it does not differ whether it's positive or negative, the yielding will occur at the same value for tension and compression. So this is your maximum bending moment at the support. This is for the section in the support. This is the maximum distance from the neutral axis. That one is the moment of inertia for the section. And if you do this calculation, you find that the maximum allowable distributed load W can be 973. At this level, we will re this the, the point at the fixed support will reach the yield or the allowed stress. And this is what I can allow as a maximum distributed load. The next topic is stress concentration. As in other loading conditions like axial torsion, at locations of sectional changes, there will be stress concentration like grooves, holes, and fillets. What does this mean? It means that at these points, when you do this calculation, the sigma you find is not really correct. You have to multiply it with the stress concentration factor and you will get a sigma max. As you see over here, the distribution is not linear. At the stress concentration point, well, it, is, it has a higher value. How do I find these values? So K for determining K, you will find different sources. For example, engineering handbooks have a lot of graphs for different geometries. And using this gra these graphs, you can determine the K value. Well, let's make a problem. Well, we have a fillet here. Well, the radius is 16. Over here, the width is 80. Over here, 120. Well, you see we are applying a positive bending stress. And we like to know the stresses in point A and B. B point B is in the fillet, where there should be a stress concentration. Point A is has nothing to do with stress concentration. It's far away from the fillet. First, for point B, try to calculate, try to find the K value. Well, R and H are needed, and WH ratio is also needed. So 16, 80, that's point 0.2. W, 
h 120 over 80 is 1.5 so what we do is take point to go up to this curve and from there you can go like this well it's something between 1.4 and 1.5 so this is what you find so now you can do your calculations first for point a where there is no stress concentration we know the formula positive moment positive y because it's it's above the neutral axis, positive moment of inertia. There we have negative 234 for point B. This time I have to use the stress concentration factor, which I determined as 1.45. Same moment, same distance. This time the distance is below the neutral axis, it's minus. Here we have a positive value and it's higher compared to this due to stress concentration, 340. This is how stress distribution looks like in point A, linear. And in point B, you will have, let's say, concentration, a higher sigma values at the fillet. Okay, this was our video about bending. In this video, we have learned what type of stresses are caused by bending moments, how they are distributed, and how we can calculate their values. Thank you for listening.